All right. Good morning, everybody, From depending on where you're tuning in from. It's a beautiful morning this morning, and we have the wonderful David from Simple Digital, who's here to talk to us. Hey, morning. Good morning. He's going to talk to us about helping tradies at uh, setting up Google Ads. There's something just came through my sound. Sorry about that, everybody. So we're going to turn it over to David soon, and he's going to walk us through some slides. And depending on where you're coming through, you can put your chats in the um, in the chat box or on the comments, and we will get to those throughout and towards the end. And yeah, we'll we'll get this started. Over to you, Dave. Cool. Thank you. Um, so this morning I am running through Google Ads, but specifically Google Ads for tradies, and. The reason why I want to do this presentation specifically is it can be really expensive to engage someone like me to run your ads or to work with an agency even because there's some setup fees and then there's monthly fees. Um, but if you have a quite a simple campaign and you're a local business, there's nothing stopping you from running your own ads yourself until you can get to the point where you want to work with someone like me or work with a larger agency. So this morning is all going to be about how you can set up your own ads and get results from Google Ads. So I've got a presentation, which I'll just share. And uh, when we go through the presentation, then I will also uh, um, go through a demo of setting up ads, which you can follow, and then you can go away and do yourself afterwards. And if you've got any questions, just ask away um, in the Zoom chat, and I've got them up and I can ask them as we go. Awesome, thank you, David. So everyone can see my slide. Google yes. Ads made Looks simple. Great. Yeah. Right. So this is, I'm going to make it as simple as possible for everyone. So you can go away after this and set it up yourself. So the first thing to think about is when you're doing any sort of marketing is you want to like actually review or think about what you want to achieve. Like what are your goals? And for the bottom line or what most businesses and tradies want is they want more leads and they want more customers because they want more jobs. So whether you're a plumber or a builder and the example I'm going to use today is actually a arborist. Um, everyone is after more phone calls, more emails. So think about what you want to achieve because that will also figure out who we are targeting, like what are your customers and how much money can we spend to do this? So have a think about your goals that you want to achieve for Google Ads. And so th think about your goals. Um, the different things that you can do or target can be like traffic. How much traffic do you need to get to your website? Or how many calls do you need to get to get X amount of new clients? Or how many emails do you want to get? Or like how much revenue do you want to achieve? So think about those different things in terms of your goals you want to achieve. And I'll go through like a little bit of a very simple campaign overview, which you can write these things down yourself. But as an example, the goal is get 10 new customers in three months time. Or it could be like grow awareness of your website by getting a thousand sessions to your website in one month. So two different kind of goals, but I like to get 10 new customers in three months. So make your goal figure out what you want to achieve with your google ads because if you do this now then you'll know in three months time if your google ads have been successful because you've got a benchmark to you know to measure that from budget so this is the million dollar question it's like how much do they cost or how much should i spend on google ads so there's two ways to figure out your budget one is how much money do you have or how much money do you want to spend? Is it $100 a month? Is it $300 a month? Is it $3,000? Whatever you've got that you can afford to spend, that's your budget. That's one way of working it out. <clears throat> the second way to work it out is how much are you willing to spend to acquire a new lead or a new customer? So in other words, I've got what's your fixed cost that you can afford, afford per, con per conversion or per lead? So I'll give you an example is I have a, a plumber client and we focus on hot water cylinder um, replacements. 
And so this is a really great job for them. They are in and out in one day and get to invoice the job straight away. And the average hot water cylinder replacement, I believe, is about $2,000, $2,500. So for that job, they can afford to spend a hundred to potentially like $150 to acquire a new customer. So if you wanted 10 new customers and you could afford to spend $150 per job, well, then your budget is 1,500 bucks. And so that's a, just an easy way to work it out. So to, it really depends on what your services are, what your average um, order value or your average quote value is worth, and then figure out, because um, you may be a builder, right? And so an average job for you might be tens of thousands of dollars. So could you afford to spend up to $1,000 to acquire a new customer? So it'll be uh, individual to your business and to how much you usually um, invoice clients and how much you're willing to pay to get a new customer. But if you can have a think about that, that is a really good way to decide your budget because then you can work out what your budget will be to achieve the results that you want. And sometimes for my plumber clients, for example, they can afford to spend up to $150 to get a new customer, but their average cost per conversion is actually about $50 to $75. So even better than what they can afford. So that means they just get more leads for their budget, which is ideal, which is what we want to achieve. So any questions on budget, um, pop them through when I can answer. Oh, well, there, there aren't just yet, but I think that's really helpful because I, I would say that trying to decide your budget is probably the, the first hurdle and it can be probably quite exciting and tempting just to get started without having really figured that out and sticking to that. So that's awesome. Thank you. It's really helpful. Yeah. And just as another point on budget is <clears throat> the thing with all your ads that are online is that you can track everything. And so what I actually recommend doing is think about how much you want to spend on your budget, but don't spend, um, don't go all in straight away. Spend the first one to three months seeing what works. And then once you know it works, then mm -hmm. you can scale up your budget and then you can spend more money. Mm -hmm. And... Okay, makes sense. Better talk to my accountant, Tony. You can see how much your accountant's willing you allow you to spend. In my in my opinion, accountants never want you to spend any money. So um, only on them. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Tony. And I'm just going to move on from budget. So there we go. Here was my example. I can afford to spend $150 to acquire a new customer. Um, and or I could afford to spend five hundred dollars per month. So those are the two ways you could work out like what your budget's going to be. All right, <clears throat> target audience. So this is really important. So who are your customers? Now, with Google, you have two main ways to target. You can target based on location, and then you can target based on the keyword that you mm -hmm. want to be found for. So pretty simple targeting options, but you need to think about, well, where are my customers located? And so usually that's like a city or a, um, a region. Um, and it can be even like a radius. So say you don't want to go any further than 150 kilometers or even like 50 kilometers to drive to a site every day. So you can put a pin marker for your location and just have a 50k radius and just target that location and then the other way to target um, the people you want to find your business is the keyword and this is the really important thing so the the reason why google ads are so effective is because people know what they want and they have a high intention to purchase because they've already done a lot of research or they know that, hey, my hot water cylinder needs replacing right now because I've got no hot water. So what you're going to do is you're going to get on Google, you're going to search for a plumber to replace your hot water cylinder, and you're just going to click on one of the first ads or first results, and whoever answers the phone is probably who you're going to end up working with. And so Google ads are really great because 
if you want to be found for hot water cylinder replacements in your location, you pay Google and then your ad comes at the top of search results. And now that person who's done that research has a very high intention to purchase. And so that's why Google ads work so well. But it all comes down to that keyword that you want to be found for. And so I'm going to go back to my plumbing example is originally we were targeting the keyword plumber Wellington because that's the service they provide and that's the location where they service um, their clients. So you would think that that would be the perfect keyword, right? Plumber Wellington. However, it was actually the most competitive keyword because if other advertisers are targeting the same keyword, it becomes more expensive because how it works is you become in a bidding war with other advertisers. So someone's willing to pay a dollar for Plumber Wellington, someone's willing to pay $2, then someone's willing to pay $3. And so you're just bidding each other until you're spending a lot of money for a keyword that's very competitive. And then the other reason why the keyword Plumber Wellington wasn't a good keyword was because it was too generic. So we could spend a lot of money being found for Plumber Wellington, but it might just be for like a washer replacement, like a very low value job that isn't really great. Um, or it could just be for the wrong jobs that they don't even do. <clears throat> so when thinking about running Google ads, I really uh, insist that you focus on your best service or whichever service makes you the most money because you're going to get like referrals and you're going to get work coming through other ways. But when you're spending money on advertising, spend money on advertising, promoting your best services to your best customers. That's going to give you, you know, the, the best revenue or the best opportunity to make more money because at the end of the day, when you're spending money on marketing, you want to see an ROI. So whatever your business is, um, have a think about what are my best services or who are my best customers and which keywords should I be targeting to reach them? I was just going to say, David, is there, a, is there a simple, quick and easy way for people to, like, say they think of keywords, to figure out what's going to be the best value in terms of whether it's really competitive or whatnot, like you were just talking about? There is. Um, it's called the Google Keyword Planner. Cool. So okay. if you Google that, Google Keyword Planner, you can actually type in the keyword and it will give you an estimate on how much that keyword will cost. Cool. Um, awesome. My favorite thing to do is open Google, start typing in keywords and just see what comes up. And you'll see that, and I'll go, I'll bring this over. And I'm located in Cambridge. So I'll just go... Plumber Waikato, and you can see who's already advertising, and you can already kind of like do a bit of research to see how competitive that keyword is, mm -hmm. and who also is appearing. And so, Plumber Waikato, like I said, very generic keyword. So we may want to go for uh, residential. Plumber Waikato, uh, residential plumber Waikato, and I'll say hot water cylinders. <clears throat> so, still competitive, but you can see um, much more targeted. So, this person here, the hot water doctor, only specializes in hot water cylinders. So, therefore, he's not competing with all these other keywords. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, my best recommendation is just do some research in Google search and see what comes up. Cool, thank you. All right, so your audience, where you're located, and what keywords you want to be found for. So here we go. Um, my example I'm going to show you soon, actually. I'm talking about my plumber example, but I'm going to show you an example for a arborist. and. Oh. The target audience is people in Waikato who need trees cut down. And so the keywords would be arborist, Hamilton, uh, tree felling, um, stump grinding, tree removal, anything that's really specific to his services or their services. Oh. Advertising. Let's make some ads. So 
once you've got your goals, figured out your budget and thought about who you're targeting, then you can actually jump in to Google Ads and then start making some ads. So what I'm going to do is bring up the screen here. So there's two um, platforms for Google Ads. There's the expert mode for Google Ads, or there's what they call Google Smart Campaigns. And the smart campaigns are what we're going to focus on because this um, platform is designed for business owners to be able to set up and deliver their own Google Ads. Now, hot tip, what you want to do is you want to Google Google Ads, and then the first thing that comes up is, ironically, an ad for Google Ads. And you'll see here it says get $600 free ad credit if you start a new account. So if you want $600 free ad credit, do it this way. Click on that ad, and then you'll go to the landing page where it says grow your business with Google Ads. To help you get started, we'll give you $600 free ad credit. So do that first. Um, hit get started. <clears throat> and then it'll just take you through the process of what you need to do to set up your new ad account. And I am logged in to the wrong account. So let me just switch Google ad account. One here. So I've got a few Google ad accounts. That won't happen to you. Right. Now, you want to enter your business name. So let's do a bit of a test. Um, we'll go like example, Trady Biz. And if you have a website, that is ideal. If you don't have a website, you can actually run ads just to get phone calls. And so what will happen is if you go your business phone number, you pop in your phone number and your ads will only appear on a mobile phone and they'll only appear with a button to call you. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So you don't need yeah. to have a website, but having a website is ideal. So if you do have a website, your ad will appear on both desktop and mobile. And then if it's on desktop, they can visit your website. But if it's on mobile, they can either call you or visit your website. Oh, good to but know. Ideally, you have your own website. Um, and uh, we'll just use mine, for example, simple.nz. And this is like it's called a smart campaign. So it is very smart. It try and automates a lot of the process and can actually like pull content and pull images from your website to help you create your ads. Um, so here we go. It's already seen that I have a, a YouTube channel and other Google business profiles. So if you have a Google business profile set up, which is one of these here, log in to, the, to Google ads with the same account with your Google business profile, because then Google ads and your Google business profile will be linked. And this can show up when people are searching in ads. But say you don't have a website, say you don't have Google business profile, you can just go through and set up your ads. Um, so we'll add a phone number. And we want to be New Zealand. You want to add your phone number. And then we go next. And here you choose what you want um, your goal to be. So is it get more calls or get more website sales or leads, um, get more visits to your physical location. And so trade businesses, usually services, and usually you want to get people on the phone. So I would mm. say get more phone calls. What if um just what if people wanted to do more than one? Would you have to set up a different ad for different purposes, or do you have to just pick one? With a smart campaign, you have to just pick one. But if you wanted um, multiple purposes, when you pick website, you can also add your phone number to your ad. Um, so your phone number will display even though we're sending traffic to your website. Cool. Um, and so will it, even though I'm doing phone calls, people can still go to my website, but the phone call is the main priority. So on all of our ads, there's going to be a call button, like front and center. 
Now, I hope it's all been simple so far. No, it's been great. Thank you. Great. Tony's so just year, oh yep. I was just gonna say Tony's just said he wants them to buy off his website. So this will be great because it'll take them through to yeah. it, right? Yeah. So Tony, if you want them to buy something on your website, do the um the second option, which was increase sales or visit website, and then all the traffic will go to your website. And if you have um, things that people can actually purchase on their website, uh, I'm not going to cover it today, Tony, but you need to set up um, e-commerce conversion tracking. And so if you have some questions about that, you might want to just send me a message and I can send you some um, details about that. Yeah. And also, everybody, after this, if you want some additional support, you can always email us at support at digitalboost.co.nz and we can point you in the right direction. Because there's definitely a video about it on Digital Boost already about e-commerce yes. and Google yes. Ads. So you'll be able to find it. Yeah. Um, so this here is actually one of the hardest parts is writing your ad copy. So in my opinion, this is the most difficult. Now, it gives you some good um, examples of what to do. And it does already write my ad copy because it takes my website, takes the content from my website and then helps me write my ad copy. But to help you, to give you some guidance, you want to have your service name or keyword you're wanting to target. So if you're targeting um, Arborist, it was my example, you wanted to say Arborist Hamilton, because that's probably what people are searching for. So if someone searches Arborist Hamilton and your ad says Arborist Hamilton, then it's exactly what they're looking for. So we just want to make it like very simple and obvious for people because they're just on their phones, searching really quick. And then there's a couple of results that come up and you just want them to click on yours because that's what people are doing. They're just instantly clicking. So make it really clear what you do and make it related to the keyword you want to be found for. So first one, your keyword service. And then the second headline is like a key selling point or something that's important about your business. So um, free quotes, for example, or fully insured, or um, if you are a like a master plumber or a master builder, some sort of key selling point that promotes um, something good about your business. So we'll say, I'll say free quotes, free quotes, um, and you have a limited characters too. So you've got to be a little bit creative with what you want to say because you've got up to 30 characters for each line. <clears throat> I might just go Waikato wide here just to add in an extra bit. And then the last one is always your call to action. So we're going to say, um, call us today or visit our website to purchase, or tell the person what you want them to do. Mm. So they know who you are, they know something special about you, and then they know what you have to do or what they need to do. So it can be call us today. And I could even go call us today for a free quote. And then I could make this one um, fully insured insured and be like 10 years experience oh it does not quite full we'll go 10 <laughs> years experience there we go and you can make all of your words with a capital or you can make it sentence case it's totally up to you there's no right or wrong way to do it um the only thing is you can't make it all caps Google won't let you do that, um, but just what, how have you set it up? Do it so it looks looks right for you, and you can see that it's got a um, example of how it's going to look here today. I mean, on the side, and then the descriptions. Descriptions a little bit longer, um, so you've got sixty characters and ninety characters to say something further about your business or service. And so here, I like to say. Um, I'll add like a list of services. So I could go stump, grinding, tree felling, uh, hedge trimming, for example. 
no job too big or small and how many characters have i used 69 okay that's about good and then here i would add another description um not digital made simple but i will say actually let's just go to the website uh, the professional arborist providing you with quality tree services perfect copy that pop that in and it's slightly too long quality tree services stump grinding tree felling hedge trimming no job too big or small and then i can go call us for a quote perfect there we go 90 characters 58 characters and so that there was me doing this quite quickly but it mm -hmm. does take a bit of time to think about and you can have more than one ad so this is just the first ad and i recommend you create three different ads and they'll all be slightly different so this one will be like arborist hamilton with similar copy and then um, the other one i'd make would be um tree felling or tree removal so it would be a different keyword that i want to target and i'd have a different ad that uh is in line with those keywords uh then again it just wants to add your number or so pop in your number so it can display with your ad next now we have to add some images to go with our ads um sometimes it will pull images from your website right you have here um and i popped in my website address which maybe was a mistake um in hindsight mm -hmm. but we can also upload your own images and say oh let's find some client images i'm going to pop in these images just for cool. example uh control you can upload whatever images you've got and one needs to be square and one needs to be rectangular why is that so one's for one's for phone right your ads can display in different places around the internet and yep. one of the placements is square and one of them is rectangular cool so if i go uh we'll select that image and here you can see how it's going to be used so mm -hmm. this one's going to be square and this one will be landscape the landscape can work but if it doesn't work you can just deselect it but if you can make it work you can choose it like that so we go done And then it's just loading. And so you can add images and then you can also add your logo. So say you've added a few images, landscape and square, also upload your logo because your logo can appear next to your ad. Um, and it just makes your whole ad look really nice and slick when you've got a little logo next to your title and your description. Mm. So, so upload your logo. Uh, with your logo, um, I believe it needs to be square. So if you don't have a square logo, you might need to get one um, just resized. So for example, here's a nice square image. So there we go. So your logo needs to be one to one. And you can upload three variations of your logo if you have them, but usually I just upload one, the best one. <clears throat> Does anyone have any questions at the moment at this stage? I'll give you a couple of minutes. How many, um, so how many images would you say is the the optimum number to upload? I know it says two or more, but what's what's kind of the happy number? Um it says two or more, but you can only upload three. So ah. I would upload three. Okay. <laughs> yeah. cool. And then you've just got you give Google the option and it right. will automatically optimize your ads and show the different images in different orders with your ad copy. And then whichever image starts performing the best, it will just show that one. Okay. So if you upload Clever. three images, yeah, you're giving Google the best opportunity to automatically optimize your ads. Oh. Uh, 
Um, and that's the benefit of a smart campaign too, is because it does that automatically for you. Whereas if someone else is doing it, you've got to do it manually and figure it out. Uh, so here's an example of how the ad could look. It's got the image, it will have your headline, description, and your logo next to it. So then we'll go next. So we have um, written our ad, ad copy, uploaded some images, and now we need to choose the keywords we want to target. So again, it will pull through keywords related to your website copy if you add your website. Um, but I'm going to delete all of these ones and go new keyword theme, arborist, and they all come up too, just to help you. Uh, tree felling. There we go. Tree service, tree felling. We'll go tree felling and stump grinding stump grinding there we go and so what you want to do for your own business is think about like that best service and then just add keywords related to that best service that you want to focus on can you provide us with a link to where we can enter there's just a question and i'm just reading it out can you provide us with a link to where we can enter our competitors url to find out the keywords that they they are targeting or receiving the most clicks. There are some tools that you can do this. And um, usually they are paid tools, but you can sign up for a free subscription to do this. And um, one of them is SEM Rush, which is one that we use. And so you can add in your competitor URLs or you can add in keywords and then you can see who's targeting those keywords or what keywords your competitors are targeting. I'll so pop that link in the yeah. chat. SEM Rush. Yeah. So sign up for, it's quite an expensive tool, like over $100 a month, um, but you can sign up for like a 14-day free trial. So sign up for that and then just cancel it. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Um, so there we go. Um, choose your keywords. And then we'll go next. And now we want to choose our location we want to target. So we can add a, um, a, a region, an area, a city. So you can add multiple or just a single. So say you were throughout the whole Waikato and Bay of Plenty, you could go Waikato, New Zealand, and then go Bay of Plenty, <coughs> Bay of Plenty. And so here you can see we've covered the entire region, but perhaps you don't want to work um, that far and you only want to work in specific locations. So what you could do is go even like Te Awamutu and just within like, say 15 kilometers. And then say maybe the other, um, oh, you can only choose one radius actually when you're doing this. So you could say Te Awamutu and or 25 kilometers, you don't want to travel any further than that for a job. And you can see the boundaries that are included in that. And so maybe you do want to go to Hamilton, so we can make it and we can bump it out to like 35 Ks. And so what happens with this is that Google will only show your ads to people who are located in this region or have an interest in this region. So Google knows that um, I might live in Auckland, but I may have like an interest in Hamilton because I own a house in Hamilton, for example. And so our ads can still display to someone in Auckland if they have an interest in Hamilton. But for the main part, we're only targeting people who are located in this location. And Google knows where you're located based on your um, internet and your uh, GPS on your phone. So it's quite targeted to only targeting people in your area. So once we've chosen our location, we hit next. And now, so this is the important part. It's why you want to think about what your budget was before. Um, you have to choose a daily budget for Google. And it always provides a recommendation. And so this may be more or less than you want to spend, um, but you can enter your own budget. 
And I'm going to start off with $10 a day, which averages about $300 a month. And it will say here, yeah, 304 is the monthly max it will spend. And with your daily budget, if your daily budget is $10, sometimes it'll spend $12 and sometimes it'll spend $8. Um, so okay. it'll fluctuate day to day. But over the course of the month, Google won't spend more than your allocated monthly budget, which in this case is $304 max. Okay. And then once we've chosen our budget, we hit next. And it'll review the ad. So we get to review all the copy our images, the location we're targeting, our keywords, and our budget, hit next, and then our ads will be reviewed for submission. <clears throat> oh, excellent. No, no, no. They want our credit card details first, of course. <laughs> so once you pop in your credit card details and then hit submit um, down the bottom, then your ads will be reviewed. And as long as you don't have... Um, any like profanity or anything illegal in your ad copy, then your ads are reviewed quite quickly. Um, but in the odd case, um, I have had ads declined. Um, so one example was a client who does um, pre-purchase property inspections, but they also do meth tests in properties. And meth and methamphetamine is not a word, word we can use as a keyword. So um. all of our ads got disapproved. So we had to just be a little bit uh, creative about how we were promoting that service. So 99% of the time, it won't be an issue, but sometimes your ads can be disapproved if you don't have the right keywords or if you've got the wrong keywords, I should say. Right. So that's submitted. And so what I'll do is um, I'll get rid of this because I don't want this account to start, but I can show you an example um, of an account, which was my Arborous client that has already been running. <clears throat> So these are the results that you can hope to expect once your ad has been running. So in the last 30 days for Total Tree Care, um, the ads have been running and they've had 1,200 impressions. And so what that means is the ad has been displayed in results 1,200 times. So a lot of people have seen the ad. Um, we've had 77 clicks. So that 77 people have either clicked to call or clicked to come to the website. Uh, local actions means if you link your Google business profile, they can click go to business because your location is there. But because this is an Arborous client, they don't have a workshop they want people to come to. So that's not something we want. So we don't get any of those. Um, but call clicks is something that we want so that someone has just clicked the call button in the ad and then called um, Total Tree Care. And then conversions, I actually count these separately in what's called Google Analytics. And if you don't already have the setup, um, do talk to whoever built your website and ask them to set up Google Analytics for you. But we can see here, um, might look a little bit confusing, but on this table, we can see paid search, direct and organic. So paid is Google Ads, Direct is they just came directly to your website and then organic means they searched for you in Google and clicked on your website that wasn't an ad. And we can see how many people filled out the contact form on their website. So I can see five people filled out the contact form in the last 28 days on their website. And I can also see that they had six phone calls in the last 30 days from their ads. So do some quick maths. That is, hang on, I'm just gonna bring up my calculator. Um, we've spent $275 and we've got six phone calls plus five emails. So that's 11 leads. So we'll go divided by 11 equals $25. So every time we spend $25 on Google ads, we get a new lead. And the average conversion rate for most businesses is about like 40%. Right. So say they got 11 um, leads and they got five new customers. So we'll call that kind of like a 50% or 40% conversion rate. So what you could just do is times that by two if it's a 50% conversion rate. And for every $50, they're getting a new customer. And so for this client, that's really affordable for mm -hmm. the average, his average job value is over a thousand dollars. 
So um, what we do with this account is when he's not busy, we increase the budget. And when he's busy, we reduce the budget. Ah. We can increase and decrease demand as he needs it. Cool. That's really helpful. I think as well, like if again, if, if you don't have Google and Analytics, definitely look into it because it is just such awesome feedback to have something right there to see how you're performing. And then also, especially if you go and make any changes or tweaks to go back and see how that affected things. That's just such an awesome assessment of how things are going. Thank you. Definitely. Yeah. And you're, you're kind of working in the dark if you don't have it set up. So it yep. is really important um, just so you can track all of your results because you do get results here in Google Ads, but it just gives you a little bit more results if you're looking at Google Analytics. And so once your ads are set up, so once you put in your credit card details, like I showed you before, hit submit, this is what your ad account looks like. And the key thing to do once your ad is set up, after about 15 or 30 days, a couple of weeks or a month, look at your search terms mm. and you want to go edit and you'll be able to see the actual keywords that people are searching for that you're coming up for. So total tree care, total tree care, te amuru, arborist, 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 all good keywords. But sometimes there can be some keywords you don't want to appear for. And so what you can do is you can click it and then you can go add to negative keywords so you won't come up for that keyword in the future. So that means you won't waste budget on keywords that you don't want to be found for. And an example, which is what I always add, is um, a negative keyword jobs because lots of people search for jobs. So they could be searching for a plumber job or a builder job and you don't want to be a, a pair for those ads if that's not what you want. Um, and so we can see here our keywords that we're targeting. You can edit them at any time. So say you want to remove a service, you can edit your keywords, or you're coming up for a keyword you don't want to be found for, just add it as a negative keyword. That all makes sense? Yep, absolutely. Awesome. And then last little tip is once you've set up your ads, set up some variations. So, um, I've set up four ads. So that means you're just giving Google the most opportunity to um, show the right ad to the right person based on their keyword. So if you had maybe like a few different keywords you wanted to target, make a few different ads relating to those keywords. And we've got a question here from Tony again, is there are so many analytical tools running, example, Google Analytics, Shopify, Meta, um, need to spend some time in my workshop not analyzing results. <laughs> Correct. So <laughs> if you do have a Shopify website and if you are running Facebook ads and you are running Google ads and you have Google Analytics set up, like all of these things um, do take a bit of time to analyze. Uh, but one tool I use, uh, it's a reporting software and it links Google Analytics, Google ads, Facebook ads, website everything into one report and then it just sends me a report every month and so i just That's get this nice. snapshot of all results the um the reporting tool i use is called swydo s-w-y-d-o dot com um but there's others out there too that you can look for but that may be a help for you tony yeah it's probably helpful for a, a lot of people especially tradies who time on the tools and in the workshop is it's massive. So yeah, I'll yeah. put that link. I'll put that in the in the little box. And then Tony, um, you had another question is can you target women um and then add or oh, target women and men separately with an ad? <clears throat> uh with a Google Smart campaign, you can't do that. Um, you can only target people based on the keywords they would be searching. And so sometimes male and female would target or search for different keywords. But on like Facebook and Meta, for example, you can separate your audiences into male and female, but not with a Google Smart Campaign. Yeah. And that more or less concludes a very simple setup of a Google Smart Campaign. And with this client here, for example, um, they have one location, they have one service we want to target. The Google Smart Campaign works really well. And as you can see, doesn't take a lot of time to set up. So you just need to spend a little bit of time, 
thinking about your budget, thinking about your keywords, set up the campaign, write some ad copy, get someone to review it for you to give you some feedback if you need, and then check your ads once a month. And as long as um, you're not coming up for the wrong keywords, your ads will just improve over time too, because the more data Google has over time, the better it can optimize your ads and then the better results you get over time as well. Awesome. And can you sort of, I'm just going to um, run through a few little questions from just sort of uh, if you were new to this. So say you're going through and um, you want to change an aspect of it. Can you just go in and you can edit or you can pause your ad and completely like if, if you can see keywords performing a certain way, you can change that halfway through? Is that? At any you time start? you can any make time. a change. So um, save this as a link. So once it's set up, just save this as a bookmark so you can easily come back to your Google Ads. If you want to pause your whole campaign at any time, you can. Um, or if you want to change your budget, uh, you can as well. So okay. usually the budget and the keywords are the things we keep an eye on if we're just running a smart campaign. Because like I said, sometimes you want to increase demand and sometimes you want to de decrease it based on how busy you are. And then the keywords, you just want to edit these check your appearing for the right keywords and just remove any that are not what you want to be found for. Awesome. Like this one here, yeah. North Shore Arborists. We don't want to go appear for that one. So we go add negative keywords. Uh, just like that. So helpful. And would you um, would you recommend for people who say uh, have a, have a, even just a basic website set up? Would you recommend they go through and they check how the website um, that everything is how they want it and that it is has all the information that it needs before investing and in doing Google Ads so their their money is spent in the in the the most uh, valuable way. That is a really really great point. So. You can spend as much money as you want on Google Ads, but if they land on a website mm. that either doesn't work properly or is just a bit crappy compared to your competitors, um, what will happen is someone will land on your website, but then they'll leave straight away without calling you or without sending you an email. So, um, yeah, really great point there is you do want to review your website first. Make sure it's got the basics, like what you do, where you do it, what your contact details are, and a list of your services. And I find a website does not need to be flash at all. It just needs to be simple and basic and have all the right information. And if it has that and you send traffic to your website, you will then get more leads, get more phone calls, get more emails. Yeah, absolutely. And can you put, can you put links to your social media in the ads as well? No. So you can only have one link. So for Google Ads, you can only choose one URL. So it'll probably be your website. Um, right. If you were running ads for your social media, do that on the social media platforms, not on Google Ads. Awesome. I was going to say as well to everyone on that point with just sort of seeing how your website is performing and if everything is where it needs to be, we have a platform called Checkable. So I'll put that link in. Basically, it's kind of like a warrant of fitness for your website, which might be a really simple, quick way before you embark on the Google Ads journey. But I'll pop that link in. There's some more questions there. I'll just yeah, I've got a couple of questions. One from Bruce. <laughs> Should I increase my per-click budget to compete with multiple competitors for the best keywords? Uh, it, it really depends. So if your per click budget is a dollar and theirs is five dollars, um, you're probably not going to come up in search results often enough. So if it is a really important keyword to you and you know that's what you want to be found for, then it may be worth um, increasing your budget. Sometimes you can actually get away with having a lower cost per click on a keyword. Because if your competitors are willing to spend $5 a click, their ad will be clicked on. But once their budget runs out, their ads stop running, and then your ads will start running. Uh, but only if your competitor has a budget that runs out. If they have heaps of money to spend, well, then they will always be at the top, and then you won't appear. So have a look at that. And um, if it is a really important keyword, then yes, increase your budget to appear for it. So I hope that makes sense for you, Bruce. 
And I had a question from Bradley. Can you use the URL to the specific product service that you are advertising rather than simply directing the viewer to your entire website or to your homepage, I think is what you mean, Bradley? Yes, definitely do that. So my plumber client example, again, hot water cylinders, we had a hot water cylinder page that they went to. So someone searched for hot water cylinder replacement. And then rather than sending them to the homepage, which was like, you know, plumberwellington.co.nz, we sent them to plumberwellington.co.nz forward slash hot water cylinder replacement. So the user searched for hot water cylinder replacement, clicked on an ad about hot water cylinder replacement, and then landed on the landing page about hot water cylinder replacement. And so that user has gone, this is exactly what I need. Cool. So you want to make it very user-friendly for your potential customers. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Bradley. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was going to suggest, Shoei, do you want to go back through your, just through the steps again, just one more time, just quickly, we'll just summarize and then it might prompt a few more questions and just to, to tie it all up and see if there's anything else that comes through. No problem. Because they were really helpful with just being able to see how how you'd written, you know, what what the what the tactics were. I think that was really awesome for people to be able to start writing some notes down and getting yeah. the ideas flowing. Well, even if I go to this last one here, it's think about your goal. What do you want to achieve with Google Ads? Because if you have a goal at the start, then you've got something to measure and you know if it's going to be successful or not. Mm. Okay. So the example was I want to get 10 new customers in three months' time. Work out your budget either what you just have to spend or what you can afford to spend to acquire a new um, customer. And as uh, I said, um, and there's a question here, I'll answer that in a second, is if you can afford to spend $100 or $150 to acquire a new customer, well then make that your budget. And then as you saw with the example for the Arborist, it's actually only $50 to acquire a new customer but his budget might have been $100. So therefore, we're just going to get more leads for the same amount of budget, which is ideal. Uh, think about your target audience. So where are they located? What keywords are they searching? And then measure your results. So once a month, have a look at your Google ads and see what kind of results you're getting for your budget. And in a perfect world, I recommend all clients manually just uh, make or track all of their leads because you might get phone calls, you might get emails, mm. you might get tokens. So every time someone contacts your business, ask, how did you hear about me? So then after a month, you have a very good idea about where your new customers are coming from and if your advertising is working. Mm. Mm, absolutely that's a really great point actually because when you've got things coming through and drips and drabs and from different sources it's quite easy just to reply to them and answer them and kind of be like oh yeah it's been kind of busy or whatnot but to have the specific numbers down there is going to be so helpful for this so thank you definitely and um, I'll just answer Tony's question is uh, I'm just trying to make a smart campaign and can't remember where to start so my advice is um, Google Google Ads and then click on the first listing that comes up where it says start advertising with Google. Here's $600 free ad credit. Um, and if I'm clicking on that ad, it actually takes me to this link here. And I I can chuck this in the chat. There we go. So there's a link for you, Tony. That's where you can get started on a smart campaign. And then Heidi asks, can I switch between a smart campaign and the expert mode? Yes, you can. Uh, so if you're in a smart campaign right here, go to settings and then switch to expert mode. Mm -hmm. Only one thing you need to know is once you switch to expert mode, you can't switch back. Oh, <laughs> surprise. So you're all in once you switch <laughs> to expert mode. So uh, tell us a look, can, what's, mm -hmm. what's expert mode about? So what could, could Heidi expect to find if she clicked there? Yeah, so I'll show you a different account. <laughs> so here's a um, Temprite Rotorua is what they're called. And 
expert mode is we have multiple services targeting multiple locations. So we have a campaign for, I'll show you all of the campaigns, a campaign for heat pumps, air conditioning, brand, refrigeration, um, dairy farm refrigeration. Every campaign has a different budget associated with that. And then each campaign um, even has, like under heat pumps, uh, not heat pumps, dairy farm refrigeration, even has multiple ad groups. So for dairy farm refrigeration, uh, there's some keywords we wanted to target just about farm refrigeration, but then we've even got keywords we wanted to target um, which were different to those ones. So with expert mode, you get uh, a lot more uh, options, but it is like a lot more technical. And this has taken me years and years and years mm -hmm. to learn. So um, if you've got the time to learn how to use it, go for it. But if you want to set up some ads, simple, quick, um, targeting a location with your main service, then I really recommend a smart campaign. If you want to get into expert mode, um, I recommend working with someone like myself because you're going to get more out of your ad budget if you know how to use the tool. Mm. Um, and then Bradley um, just said and um, mentioned that this is much better advertising than on Facebook and Instagram. I tend to agree, Bradley, but I tend to agree because of what I said earlier is with Google, people have a high intention. So with a, in marketing, we talk about a funnel and at the top is awareness. And then the next part of the funnel is uh, research and consideration. And the next part of the funnel is like purchasing. And people who are using Google ads are already down the bottom of the funnel. They already want to purchase. They've done the research and consideration or are starting that. Yeah. And with social media ads, it's all awareness because people aren't actively looking for your product or service. They're just scrolling on social media. And what you sell may or may not be interesting to them, but you're creating awareness with people who may be your perfect customers. But with Google ads, that's where I like to start with most of my customers because, hey, you want to get more leads? Let's start with the low-hanging fruit. And then if you want to run Facebook ads and Instagram ads as well, then we can grow your awareness further. But yeah, I really recommend Google ads as a place to start. Awesome. Awesome. And I think that's about time too. Yeah, just about. I just have one more question that I wanted to yeah. check. So say if someone was um, especially starting out or they just barely had any budget at all, yeah. is there like a point where you'd say um, just like, like not not don't bother, but like that there, there, there's a point where your money could be spent elsewhere or, you know, retained? Or is, like, is, there, is there a point where you could spend money and it, it just wouldn't be seen or it's just not quite worth it? Or what would you say is the minimum that you would want to be looking at spending i think like ten dollars a day is a good place to start mm -hmm. which is three hundred dollars a month um but my client who's uh, with the lowest budget is 150 dollars a month right and that 150 dollars is just um evenly spread across the month right and his business um is driver training actually and it's just a part-time thing he does is like a, a little bit of a hobby even. Yeah. So his ads don't appear very often, but they only appear enough for him to get a few phone calls every month. Mm. So I recommend $300 is a good place to start. If you're anything less than that, um, you might not really get any results, but like $150 is like the minimum I've worked with for a client, which is $5 a day. Anything right. less than that, yeah, you're right. If it's a dollar a day, for example, if your budget was only $30, you probably wouldn't get any traffic at all. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. And unless anyone's got any other questions, we might leave it there. But thank you. It was so helpful. It was awesome. Very, very yeah. um, intuitive and and simple and easy to follow. So thank you. And again, if anyone has any questions, you can get in contact with David or you can contact us at Digital Boost, um, support at digitalboost.co.nz. And yeah, thank you everybody for coming. And I will close this off. Have an amazing rest of your day, everyone. All See right. you later. Bye.